Okay, this podcast will go over configuring serial links. We will start with the basic config to make it come up, and then we'll change it to PPP and configure some different things uh, with PPP. So first thing we want to do is get into the router interface. We're going to configure serial 010 first. We need to give it an IP address, and I already have IP addresses picked out in my head, so I'll put my IP on there. I'm using a 30-bit mask because it's a point-to-point -point link, so I only need two usable IP addresses. For the other router. That wasn't what I wanted, zero, 010. Zero. All right, so I configured the two uh, interfaces. They're both up and green now. If I do show IP int brief. We see that my interface is up and up. I should be able to ping the other side. All right, so I can ping the other interface. However, I did not configure any routing yet, so we cannot actually send traffic across. So I'll go ahead and configure EIGRP. Do it on the other router. All right, so now it should have uh, routing tables. So now I have a route I picked up from EIGRP for my other network. So my other machine, this machine is 192.168.10.33. This one is 10.1. So I should be able to ping now. Uh, 33. All right, so it's working. So basically, that's the very basic config you need to do to configure a serial interface on a Cisco router. A couple of things we want to look at. Uh, mainly if we do show interface serial 010, we can see a lot of different things. Uh, interesting thing I'm interested in right now is the encapsulation. By default, uh, layer two uses uh, HDLC, which is Cisco proprietary. Uh, encapsulation, basically you should know by now if you're worrying about serial interfaces that the encapsulation uh, defines what the bits mean. So at, the, at layer one we send bits across the wire. The encapsulation defines what they mean at layer two, so that defines the framing. So we're going to change our encapsulation on both sides to PPP. PPP has some uh, extra features uh, that you might be interested in using. Uh, one of those features is looped link detection, error detection, multi-link support, and authentication. Those are the four features. We're not going to worry about those other three for now, but we are going to configure authentication here in a minute or two. So I'm going to go ahead and go back into the uh, serial interface and change the encapsulation to PPP. I'll go to the same thing on the other side. If you notice, it's setting serial went down. Now we're using... Uh, a different encapsulation type so that is a problem it's like one router speaking French and the other one speaking Chinese so they can't communicate right now so yeah so it says it's down so now I'm using PPP uh, they should come back up they came back up you can see my EIGRP 
came back up so we can go ping for fun to make sure it still works again. So it's still working again. Now if we do our show command for our serial interface, now we see that our encapsulation is PPP. And there's some other things that show up. LCP open, IPCP, CD, PCP. I don't even know what all those things really mean. So uh, we're going to skip over what those mean because apparently it's not important if I don't know, right? So now we're going to configure authentication. We're going to do authentication uh, first using uh, CHAP. So if we want to use CHAP, we need to set our host name on each router. So I'm going to set this router to R1. Right? And this router over here can be R2. And now on each router, we need to set a username that matches the username, the host name of the other router. So on a router one, I need a user called router R2 because that's what I set the username to. Now I'll give it a password of pass one for fun. I was looking for something in my book. I got lost in my book. Oh, there it is. Yeah, so I said the password to pass one. I was looking for the example because I couldn't remember if it wanted the passwords to be the same, and it does want the passwords to be the same. So the password needs to match what I said over here on the other router. So I will create a username on router two called R1 because that's router one's name, and I'll set the password to pass one. Really great, awesome, secure password. And then I want to go into the serial interface again on both routers. Go into the serial interface again on both routers. And now I want to set PPP authentication uh, chap. I'm already in there. Chap. So now they're both set up for CHAP authentication and if I show IPM brief it shows serial 010 is up and up if I go back to my host I can ping which shows that the uh, serial link is still working so my authentication is working uh, for CHAP uh, now we're going to configure our other serial link. So if we look at, at uh, my two routers, I have two serial links, serial 000. Also, we're going to go configure it. We're going to configure it for uh, PPP, and we're going to configure it for authentication using PAP. So I'm just going to go ahead and quickly run through and change the IPs and stuff without talking about it and change the encapsulation. All right, so hopefully that took care of both of those guys. So now I have my EIGRP. Uh, got a new adjacency, so if I look at my my routing table, you see I now have two routes for that particular subnet uh, using both uh, links. So still, if I should go ping, it should still work. So it still works, which is great. Now I'm going to configure PAP authentication. So PAP works a little differently. With PAP, you do not have to specify it does not use the host name as the uh, username for the router. So you have to actually specify what username you want to send and you have to uh, create a username that matches that. So this time we're going to use different usernames. I'm cre going to create a user for, 
for router2 called router2. And I'm going to set the password to password2. And over here on router2, I'm going to create a user called router1. And I'm going to set the password to password1. And now I need to go into the serial interface again. And now I need to configure, once I get in here, I need to configure PAP. So the command for that is PPP PAP sent username. So this is where you tell it what to send as a username. So on router one, I want the username to be router one. And then you tell it what the password should be. And router one's password is password one. On router two, it's going to be a very similar command, except it's going to be router2 stuff, so the username should be router2 and the password should be password2. So now in theory if I hit enter over here on this other window it should start working, but right now in theory uh, router2 is sending PAP related information and router1 doesn't know anything about PAP, so I wonder what the interface status is. Yeah, it still says they're both up. Oh well, we'll go ahead and and, uh, and do that uh, pap on this side too, so they both match. I'm not sure why it didn't fail a little more quickly, uh, but now it should be up using pap for authentication. So that is how you do that.